<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a real special treat for you today. Uh, I've been trying to hook up with this fine musician and one of my heroes for a long time, and we're finally doing it here in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Jazz Education Network fourth annual event here. A great, great basso profundo player, right. and uh, he's on many recordings and has done tireless work with the local 802 Musicians Union that I'm a proud member of, and we're here with the great Bob Crenshaw. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you, Bob. You always look so great. I always say, uh, whatever kind of diet you're on, I want to get on it. <laughs> well, what I do is, whatever my wife puts on our face and our skin, that's what I use. So <laughs> I, I was just 80 years old and I uh, had my 80th birthday, December 10th, so wow. I'm really feeling God good. God bless you. Thank you. You look beautiful, and, you. and you always sound impeccable, you know. And uh, a couple of things I want to ask you about, because, uh, you know, you, you really are one of the innovators of the electric bass, you know. And uh, so when you started playing electric bass, was it a Fender that you had? Uh, let's see. Yeah, it was a Fender. But, you know, for me, playing the electric bass is a bass mm -hmm. for me. I know a lot of musicians don't like, and they get into a lot of different discussions on, you know, playing the electric as opposed to the acoustic. Mm -hmm. For me, a bass is a bass. Right. So what I play, one of the things I made sure that I did was uh, I didn't change the way I played on one instrument to the next. Mm -hmm. I tried to make the the electric bass, the Fender bass, or whatever, sound more like the string bass. We amplify string basses, so ampli playing an instrument that was built for amplification mm -hmm. was a very easy thing for me. So I, you know, I never thought about it. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm one of the few guys. I didn't try to make it, I didn't think of it mentally as anything else but a bass. Mm -hmm. I didn't put it down, I didn't go through any kind of changes. It was a bass. It had four strings on it, the right. same four that's on the string bass. The same notes I play on one, I, I play on the other. Right. It, it always seems to me as if you're playing in, in an acoustic way on electric, you know. I always felt that when I heard that you. That was the only way that I knew to play. Right. That, that yeah. was first, you know, I didn't want to change anything, mm -hmm. but I knew that the instrument, at least you could hear it. You know, sometimes I go places and I don't always hear the string bass, mm -hmm. but each player playing a string bass, each bass has a different sound. The acoustic bass was not really made for amplification, but we amplify the string bass. Right. You know, yeah. where the electric bass, Fender basses, and so forth, they're all made for for the amplifier. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it was easy for me. I didn't really. It was an easy transition to make. Yeah. Well, I, I want to skip a few things, but I, I have to mention that uh, Bob is from. The land of Lincoln, Illinois. I was born in Chicago myself, you know. Everston. And, yeah, Everston. I'm an yeah. Everston guy. I got family there, and, you know, uh, but you've been in New York for a long time. Uh, at what point did you come to New York? That must have been very active. In, in 50, I think I came in 58. I came, the first time I came, I was, I would think I was going to do something with Max Roach or somebody. Wow. And I got called, and when I came to New York, New York was so dirty. You know, I'm from Evanston, and Evanston is a gorgeous college, university town, beautiful. Right. And w first time I saw garbage in the front rather than in an alley, I said, let me get out of here. <laughs> I, so I think I stayed for four days in New York, and I said, no, 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 wow. I'm not ready for this. So I split and went back, went back to Evanston, went back home, mm -hmm. you know, and finally I came back. But... I, at that point, I wasn't ready for the filth that I saw right. you know, when I came. I just didn't understand that kind of thing. So Yeah, the Big Apple is uh, quite a shocker first time around, you know? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a shocker. I right. mean, you, you have to get used to living in a place like New York. Yeah. I think it's better now than maybe it was, but it, it, you have to get used to it. Right. 
But Bob, you, you know, you played with so many different artists on, on records and live dates, and um, you know, of course, uh, many, many years association with Sonny Rollins, you know, and uh, you guys go way back, and uh, uh, guitar players as well, Grant Green and Wes Montgomery, you know, and uh, I really, really want to ask you to tell us, if you could, a story about the great Lee Morgan who, who left us uh, suddenly and way, way too young, you know. And Are you are, are you on that record, The Sidewinder? Yes. Wow, one of my all-time favorite albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the yeah. things about the album, very few people know, I guess when you listen to Sidewinder, Lee Morgan, we had recorded everything on the CD I guess there were albums then, rather than CDs, or as an album, and we needed one more tune. Lee went in the bathroom, and we didn't have any idea what he was doing. He was in there five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and we said, you know, at that time he had a drug problem, and was kind of just getting over the drug problem. And so I said, well, maybe, he's, you know, he must be doing something in there. He stayed for about 15 or 20 minutes. And when he came out, he had written, that was, he wrote Sidewinder. Wow. And so he passed the music out. And we didn't write anything down. We ran through the tune. And he asked me to play a pickup. And I'm a bass player with few notes, you know. I just thought of doom do doom doom. Yeah. Okay, now we recorded the tune. The tune was almost 15 minutes long. Wow. And when we got ready to take the tune out to play the melody, I forgot what I played in the beginning. So we had to stop at that point and go back, play what I played, that pickup that I played, and then we, we were able to take it out from me hearing what I played before. Then we took the tune out but if you yeah. listen to the CD when you hear the out chorus you'll see there's a little break between because they no had to splice yeah. wow. so I know very few people know that story yeah. it was so long I didn't remember what I played it was 15 minutes long how could I remember what I played at the beginning oh. and it wasn't written he just told me to play a pickup wow. So I love the hell out of that track. I, I actually I had my 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 biggest hit of all times when I uh, covered that, and Al Jasbo Collins broke it on on his program on WNEW 11:30 a.m. But that pickup that you just talked about, that's the one thing that I did play verbatim on the organ because I play the bass on the organ. So I listened to the bass, and I've been listening to your bass line for so long. And I just talked with Harold Mayburn a little bit about Lee too, and of course he was with him that night, you know. And, uh, yeah, folks, you know, look it up. It's all history now. You know, we're making history now. Well, a funny you know, thing talking about, about this. A, this a funny great. thing about that uh, album, all, again, Barry Harris, when I think of the personnel on the album, now, for me, a McCoy Tyner or somebody like that would have been the better choice for that type of tune. Right. Uh, Barry is more of a bebop player, but I remember Barry saying, man, I've never been on a hit. At that point, it was, again, it was one of the early jazz hits. It, right. was, it was a hit. Crossed and nobody, over. it crossed yeah, over. Yeah. And very few people really thought about it at that time. Wow. It, it's being a hit, you know, and Lee Morgan coming up with it. I mean, Lee was an incredible player wow. to begin with. He was a hell of a musician. Yeah. But nobody thought about it other than it was a tune. And we where needed did, where one did you, more where tune. Where did you uh, track that record at? At Rudy Van Gelder's. Oh, out in Rudy, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in Jersey. Wow. And, I mean, again, for it to be the last tune we recorded on the date, it was amazing. That, that I don't know whether Lee had thought about it before, if this was something that he was thinking about, 
and just put down, yeah. you know, but it was incredible. Absolute magic, you know, that track you can listen to all night and day, just yeah, the, rhythm yes. of, the rhythm of the, life. The rhythm, yeah, well, <laughs> it, the, the feel of it, but be, I was saying Barry, being on the record, Barry is not a funk player, right. and it was kind of a funky tune. He played very funky. So, so yeah. Barry said, I'm going to play as funky as I can. Wow. I mean, I remember, and we were all laughing, because nobody really thought about it. Oh, other man, than, what know. a story, Bob. That's so great. Thank you very much for relating that story to us. Uh, you are. I always wondered about that, you know, because the magic came across on the wax, you know. Yeah, it and did. It really did, you know. And the, the other thing, we can't get out of here without mentioning the, the tireless work that Bob has been doing with Local 802. He's, he's been our jazz advocate for many years and even in semi-retirement you know you're still leading the ship you know and right now there's uh, some very good uh, causes that you're spearheading you want to say a couple of words about the it's j4j very, J8? Well, it's very important for musicians generally to think about pensions you, you know there's again the it's another life i mean as we get older things start to happen and as we get older the groups that we played with when we were 20 and so forth people pass on so you move and right. everybody needs the pension mm -hmm. as far as being able to live and right. the jazz community we knew very little about any of those things because most of the jazz musicians were not in the union and the ones who were in the union the union really never covered jazz so we kind of took a pass on everything mm -hmm. but we had monies going into a pension that we didn't know anything about mm -hmm. and I'm one of the fortunate people with all of the TV shows and the records that I've made I was able to build a great pension so I wanted to talk about it to people you know, I wanted to make sure yeah, you showed that the way to many musicians who didn't even know what a pension was. In fact, you put the idea in my brain my, myself. I know I'm a vested member, but I didn't even think about it until I heard your, your presentation at the local 802. You know? Well, that was the same thing mm -hmm. with me when I started. But, you know, people would come to me and talk about a pension, and I would say to them, get the hell out of here with that, you know, because I figured I'm going to have enough money. I was busy playing, working all over the place. So I said, why am I worrying about that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. It's been very important in my life because now I can do what I want to do, period. You know, I'm 80. I was just had my 80th birthday, wow. December 10th, and I can do what I want to do. Yeah. You know. That's beautiful, man. Well, thank you for all the great uh, service to uh, the musicians and to our union. You didn't didn't forget all the cats on the way up. That's you know? right. And, and, you know, your music is uh, history, you know, and, and uh, we made history right here. I'm really so happy you took a, a little time to sit with us. And, you know, you, you're, you're an educator too, Bob, so, you know, before we get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, the great Bob Cranshaw, one of my heroes, the great groove of all times uh, right here with us. Before we let Bob go, one little nugget of advice to sign off. What I say to all of my students, remember, jazz was my dessert, but I didn't make it the whole meal. For young people playing, learn to play all of it you know whatever I played there was a jazz feel to it I feel like if I were playing a classical tune that there, there would because I'm a jazz musician there would be a jazz feel to it so remember jazz is your dessert but don't make it the whole meal